And I want to begin talking about hybrid vigor. Obviously, you all represent uh, breed associations, but let's be honest, hybrid vigor works in chickens, it works in corn, and it works in cattle. Um, you all have been uh, maximizing or capitalizing on hybrid vigor for a long time with Beef Masters. Uh, tell us about it. Sure, Kevin. No, there's no doubt, however you want to describe it, crossbreeding, hybrid vigor, heterosis, uh, it's the one thing within the industry that is free, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, it's hard to overcome, uh, but crossbreeding is very impactful to commercial herds and their profitability. Uh, but it also impacts the omen in multiple levels, from fertility and longevity on cows, uh, adaptability to those females, to their climate and region, uh, and, and vitally important, I think, to, to the industry as we move forward. Now, your two organizations have actual hybrids that are registered. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, in, in the Simmental platform, again, essentially any and all breed compositions are welcome until we look at that. I think the, the long and the short of it is, to Colin's point, the data is just abundantly clear. Responsible crossbreeding works on the direct side, of course, in that terminal calf, right? So if we look in ours, for example, the Simangus calves a great pairing of two phenomenal breeds. And if you go to Superior Livestock Auction, they'll tell you in the last few years, there's been a five-fold increase in the number of Sim Angus calves identified on their platform. And that's wonderful from a direct standpoint. But the gift in the business is maternal heterosis, right? Um, that's what, again, goes to our cow longevity. She's more productive in her lifetime. And so if you're a commercial outfit and you're running a bunch of straight Simmental cows and you're not reaching out and looking at an Angus or a red Angus bull, you're doing it wrong gotcha. and vice versa. And so we are convinced the data is clear and our producers just make more money, Joe, if, if they go about it in that fashion. So Mark, what should people consider if they've got a set of cows and they want to try a different breed? How do they go about selecting the right breed for their herd? I think that's a big part of crossbreeding. We talk about the heterosis and the hybrid bigger, Kevin, but the, the next big thing to me is breed complementarity. And I think as we look at most of our hybrids on our Continentals versus our British-based cows, we're trying to find that medium. We get it with one cross. As Colin said, you get the big bang for your buck on the female for stability, calf survivability, and weaning weight. But as we look at the life of that crossbred cow over 12, 13 cabin seasons, those pounds add up and those dollars add up. As we look at the same thing as we're trying to find the right balance between marbling and yield grade and finish weights, that breed complementarity, I think, Kevin, for finding the right cattle for the right cross to fit today's industry, um, it's, it's the quickest, biggest free lunch, as Colin puts it, in crossbreeding in the cattle business. And I think it's got a lot of future. And the tools that we have now to find those cattle and sort them out through these different breed associations, it makes the job easier for the commercial cattlemen. Yep. Any specific uh, thoughts relative to uh, what producers should consider in developing a, a, a organized crossbreeding system? Yeah, Kevin, I think one of the things that you always need to think about is, is the relative contribution of the breeds. And, you know, we may have learned a long time ago that British breeds do this and continental breeds do that. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of genetic selection in all the breeds. And so people need to understand that they're used to using, say, one particular breed where breed average is acceptable for heifer bulls. You need to make sure that, that you know, as you look at other breeds, how do those populations line up? How do they line up for growth? How do they line up for calving ease? How do they line up for marbling? All those traits. I think that's really important because it's, it's not that, that they're all exactly the look same. Look at the animals, not just the breeds. Yeah, exactly. And, and the differences between the breeds in terms of if I want to have the same level, there's good data from the Meat Animal Research Center and other places that let you say if I want, you know, breed X and breed Y to be you know at the same level of the trait but you got to do the math to figure it out you can't just assume average is average mm -hmm. and when we talk about hybrid vigor it becomes even more exciting when you cross boss indicus with boss taurus right that's exactly right kevin i i think that uh, when we start looking at heterosis and environmental adaptability uh that the brahmin breed brings and the longevity of that cow um with the british and the continental breeds is very important especially for the gulf coast and those semi-tropic type of areas uh, that we're dealing with 